Hello FlossTube. My name is Jennifer. I'm the Calculated Stitcher. I am sorry it's been a while since I videoed and um, I know I look horrible but I just happen to have the house all to myself and I don't have to go to work or do anything. So I thought I'm going to take the chance right now and make a video and hopefully it goes pretty well. Um, but like I said, no makeup on and just got out of the shower and dried my hair so I'm looking a little disheveled. But um, today is March 24th, 2020. It's the day after my youngest son. I have five children and he's the baby. He turned 17 yesterday. <laughs> so kind of sad and happy, I guess. So um, this is floss tube number eight, I'm pretty sure. And I have a whole bunch of stuff because it's been a while since I taped because it has been a little hectic, as it has been for everybody, I'm sure. Um, and so I kind of spread it all out, and I thought I had a system. And now I'm looking at it thinking, I'm not sure what my system was. So it's okay. We're just going to have fun here anyway. Um, life update, just real fast. Uh, of course, we went to online. I'm a high school math teacher. I teach from Algebra 1 to Calculus. Um, I'm the only teacher, high school math teacher at my school. Uh, it's a small school. Uh, we went to online classes, and um, so it takes up a lot more time. People are like, oh, you get to stay home all the time. It's like a break, but it's not a break uh, because I have to put everything online, and then I also have to have paper copies, and I also help deliver the homework and pick up homework from uh, students if their parents don't want to get out or they live very far away because um, over half of our student population are what we call transfer students, uh, which means they don't actually live in our school district because our school district only has about, I think, 45 kids if it was just our school district. So, um, and we have around 200 now, 210, something like that. From That's from pre-K through 12th grade. So, Needless to say, the majority of them do not live around here. Some travel as much as an hour, hour 15 minutes to get here every day. And so instead of their parents having to come once a week to drop stuff off and to pick up the new work, if they don't have internet access at home, then um, I'm one of the ones that helps go deliver things. And then you also have to put your lessons online for the people who want them online. And so... Anyway, it's just, it's a lot of work, and I miss my kids. I miss my kids so much, I can't even tell you how much. Um, I always miss them during the summer, but right now, it's like I know I'm not supposed to be not in class. I know that was a double negative, but um, I, you know, I'm supposed to be in class, and so I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I don't know why, anyway. And then uh, I also, one of my other jobs is to work at the local grocery store here in town. And it's a tiny grocery store. It has three aisles that are not very long. And um, so, and it's been really, really busy as people, you know, as one would expect right now. Um, I wish people would stop hoarding things because <laughs> some people can't get anything because others are buying everything up. Think I don't know what they think is going to happen, but... Anyway, it doesn't matter, um, but it's just, it's been very hectic. We've had people driving um, from like San Antonio, which is almost two hours away, to come shop at our little tiny store. Well, you know, we only get like 10 gallons of milk a week on average, and um, that's for our town. <laughs> and so, anyway, it's just a big mess. So, I haven't had much time. I've been working a lot more at the grocery store trying to help out. So... Uh, anyway, just rambling. Okay, so um, I haven't had a whole lot of stitching time, um, but I have, and I knew, I know I said I wasn't going to buy anything unless they were my certain designers, and I fell off that, that train really quickly. Uh, I really wanted to stick to it, but market happened, and other discoveries were made, I guess I could say. And so I, I really just fell off it. And then when I'm stressed, I buy things and I need to not do that either. Anyway, but, oh, I did say where I live, we're not under um, shelter in place. We, um, Texas, 
the governor said is um, we have over 220 counties. Our state is divided into counties. I don't know if other states do that or not. And we have over 220 counties that are so sparsely populated. He said he couldn't make a mandate for the whole state like that. But I know the larger cities like Houston and Dallas and San Antonio, because that's where all of the cases that have been, um, I'm talking about the coronavirus, I don't even think I said that, have been found in Texas. And so um, I know the big cities have shut down, but we have not shut down. But there's not much for us. I mean, school, we did stop going to school. And um, I know in our county and my surrounding counties, there are no cases right now. So that's good. That is good. Um, I was going somewhere with that and I don't know what it was. I don't know. Anyway, stress, retail therapy, the whole thing. Here I am today. But so I had this in order, but I don't, uh, or some kind of semblance of order, but I forgot what my order was. So we're just going to go with it and I'm just going to start. My, I'm sitting on the floor and I've got a circle all around me, so... Um, oh, I know why. I was saying I haven't had very much time for stitching. And so um, I really only have three main whips that I worked on since I spoke with you. And one of them, I think, is in my daughter's car. And um, she's not here right now. So she and the rest of my family are up at my mom's raking her leaves and stuff. So um, I had the house to myself, so I thought I would just make this video. The first one that I was going to show you is the Suffrage Act, and it's by Little House Needleworks. This one is super cute, and this one is a stitch along that, um, trying to make it focus. There you go. Um, Colleen and Cheryl at Stitching with the Sisterlies, they, um, started and I, I think there's some other ladies too but I watched theirs that's how I learned about it um they're doing a stitch along and it's s w t s suffrage on Instagram so that's where you can post your progress and this what if I put it on here if it'll stick I did not iron these I'm very very sorry I'm going to go in there. I should have done that first, but I was worried that somebody would come home. I'm trying to move my thread so you can kind of see uh, before I was finished. So I wanted to do this. Oh, I'm probably going to have to get up on my knees so I can see. Let's see. This is my progress so far. Um, last time, I think I just had the words and I may have had part of the bunting. I didn't have the white part. I think I just had the red part. So I finished the bunting so for the blue part uh and then I did this and all the brick and then I did her dress and holy moly that's a lot of white a lot of white but it's okay I think it's going to be beautiful when it's finished so she kind of looks kind of strange right now with her head but that's okay so that's one I'm a Texas Tech shirt on today so my kids that are in college, their colleges all have gone to online also. So, and then today Lubbock shut down all non-essential. Um, I'm still on my knees real fast. I'm going to sit back down in a minute. I just want to get close to show you this. Um, so her job is, is um, gone right now. So now she's seeing if she can find a job being a sacker because she um, helps pay her rent every month. So she's trying to find something. It's a tough time right now. Oh, I should show you this first. This is Birds of a Feather. Oh, I should have just set up the table where I normally sit. Oh, Jennifer. I'm trying to get it to focus. It's really just not wanting to. One moment. There we go. Okay, Birds of a Feather. And this one's called Sally Spencer. Sally Spencer Sampler. And I know this one's out of print. So, but you might be able to find it on eBay or somewhere like that. And so I have finished everything except the little initials that I'm putting everywhere. I put my husband's right here. There's my husband. And then right here, it's going to be wrought by, and then my name is going to go right here. And then I'm going to put initials of family members all around it. 
So the other, I have to make sure I'm focused because I have my reading glasses on. Um, the other, only other whip, oh no, no, I have this one. I have this one. I almost forgot. Hold on. I'm telling you, this is a crazy, crazy, crazy video. This one is, and I'm looking for my paper. My daughter's calling, but this is the fourth band in the Ginny Bean for the Parlor series. And it's the uh, Good Shepherd. I know I grabbed it and brought it. I'll find it in a minute. There's Noah's Ark up here. So that's where I am. You can see the three little sheep. You'll see them better when I get all the grass in there. This one is a lot of fun. But then for some reason, I just got on a roll. Like I just wanted to stitch on Sally Spencer. And so I started working on her and then I just didn't want to stop. So that's, which is good because then I got really close to a finish. All I have to do is my name and the initials and then I'm done. And it's going to be my first, I'm so excited. It's going to be my first I guess bigger project and I love to work on big projects, but I haven't finished any. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So it's going to be my first thing that I'm ever going to frame. And so that's really exciting. Okay. Uh, so those are my whips. Then let's talk about some stash acquisition. And if I come across the good shepherd, I'll show it to you. One thing is I downloaded this. It's a freebie chart, and it's from um, Sassy Jack's Stitchery. I think they're in North Carolina, because I want to go there one time. Uh, they're in the attic. This is Elizabeth Cooper, and it's a free sampler. And so you can just go to their uh, website, their, like if you're going to order. And then I just ordered the kit, and so it's supposed to be coming in. So I'm excited about that one. Another one is, I'm looking for something to put behind it. I'll put Sally behind it. Okay, antique, let me find the name. Antique, sampler and antique needlework quarterly. Okay, how this happened is I was watching Instagram. No, not watching, but I was going through Instagram one day. And this lady had was working on a sampler and it was amazing. And she had abbreviated like S-A-N-Q, S-A-N-Q, that she had gotten it from S-A-N-Q. I was like, S-A-N-Q? What is S-A-N-Q? So, of course, then I started Googling things, trying to figure it out because I wanted to know. And I didn't want to bother her and ask her where she had been. Of course, she wouldn't have mind. But I, so I kept Googling, trying to figure out what it was. And then this came up, popped up. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And it's like a CD. They are... Um, and y'all all probably already know this, and I'm the only one since I'm a newer stitcher. But it's a magazine that used to come out quarterly. And um, they it has beautiful samplers. And it's like back from the 90s all the way through the 2000s. And I'm assuming that it's not published anymore, which is a sad thing. Because I've only looked through a few of the... Um, not episodes, Jennifer... A few of the magazines that are in there and um, they're just gorgeous. Well, the very first one, I looked at the very last one that is on the CD and it is this. And look at this Quaker sampler. It is, well, maybe if it was not blurry, you could look at it. There we go. Look at this. Oh, isn't it beautiful? And this is the name. And I know I'd say it incorrectly, so I wanted to show it to you. Um, and it's part one because it's in the next to the last edition. And then the one, so it is, I can tell you, the summer 2015. I've already printed it off, so and made a working copy. Summer 2015 and fall 2015. So I guess fall 2015 was the last one, or that's the last one that I have. So 
anyway, so this one is just stunning. And so I put on Instagram, this is the one I'm going to start and I'm going to call it my uh, Quaker Quarantine Sal. So if you have a Quaker that you'd like to stitch along with, you can use the has hashtag um, and I'll put it right here. And I can't remember now if it's Quarantine Quaker Sal or Quaker Quarantine Sal. I think it's whatever it is. I'll put it right here. <laughs> I put it on my Instagram a couple of days ago. Anyway, so I have ordered the fabric. It's a 46 count because it's huge. And so I went with a higher count because um, it's a smaller piece of fabric. But And then I also ordered the NPI for which it called. And um, I've never stitched with NPI silk, so I'm kind of excited about that. What is really interesting is that it's all the black. But then this one little X right here, I don't know if you can see it, is red. Do you see it right here? I think that is so interesting. So, anyway, this is my Quaker Quarantine Sal, or Quarantine Quaker Sal. I'll be hitting myself for not knowing this. but So, if you're interested, I'm going to do that. My daughter's calling again. Hold on. I'm going to answer this. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, it's my daughter who lives in Lubbock. She, uh, she's an assistant manager for a store that sells Texas Tech merchandise. And they, uh, of course, now have been closed down. And so she was waiting to hear if they were going to continue to pay the managers or not or anybody. And they said no. They told her to fill out unemployment papers and she's like I'm not going to live on unemployment so she's I said just look for another job so she's gonna look for like Target and places like that that need stockers for their groceries the grocery part of their stores uh, Whole Foods I think is the name of one of the markets that she likes to go to anyway so she's gonna try anyway and while I was on the phone with her I found my good shepherd this is what that piece is gonna look like And it's the Jenny Bean for the Parlor. It's the fourth band by Shakespeare's Peddler. I don't know if I said that. I'm so out of practice. And I, when I watch myself back to edit, like I don't really edit. I add like the stuff underneath. Um, I think, oh my gosh, Jennifer, you didn't even complete a thought. Because in my mind, it's already completed. And so I find myself not finishing what I meant to say. I don't know. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, we talked about my Quaker Sal. Um, then I got some, well, I got a lot. I got a lot of charts. And I like haul. If you don't like haul, then you may want to fast forward towards the end. There's not much left other than um, some things that people sent me. But that's what most of this is. So this one is Little House Needleworks. And it's spring ABCs. This one is not new, and I did not just buy this. I've had this one for a while. I have all of them. But um, I did order all the floss to do this one. And um, it should be coming in the mail sometime this week. So I'm excited about that because I do. this is one I am going to start soon. Then this one is another one. This one is new. I'm pretty sure, yes. This one is a uh, market release. Jane Cowie, and it's Scarlet House, and it is absolutely beautiful. Down here, those moths, the birds, the houses, I love everything, everything about this. And um, I actually ordered the um, needlepoint silks for this one also. So, that one I'm excited about. This one... I'm sure everybody has seen this one. There's kind of a glare. I have a window right here. My bedroom has a lot of windows, so I'm not sure where to sit that's the best place, but right here apparently next time, don't sit here. But this is Newcastle Bouquet, and it's by Teresa Kogut. And there's all the information on it right there. This one actually doesn't call for much floss. I think it called for one, two, 
three classic color works, four DMCs, and two weak style works. So this one I actually have the um, floss already for. So, and I have a lot. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a lot, but I have some linen that I'm pretty sure I can do. Here, watch. I'll show you. Oh, there's my window. That's where I sit when I stitch. That's where my husband sits and watches TV because the TV's right across from us. But if you look right there, that's all my linen and it's sorted by count. You can see the big tree outside my window. I had the shade down. I thought it would try, kind of help. And here we come back around. And there's my room. Okay. So anyway, I have those. This is another one that I bought. And I have his hot, his eye is on the sparrow. This is the second one. Uh, Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Samplery. And Beth Twist is just amazing. And here's the title. And I love the book. It's in a book format this time, um, which is beautiful. But I already own His Eyes on the Sparrow, so there wasn't really a reason. I mean, the part of me that likes everything the same size and to look the same really wanted to order it. But then <laughs> I told myself that was a little more than ridiculous. So I did not. I was strong. So proud of myself. So then I, now I owned these charts, but what I did was I did get the rest of the floss to kit them up because I think I'm going to do these um, sometime. I haven't decided how I'm going to do them yet, but um, this, these are the Christmas berries. So this one is day one, two, and three, and these are by Erica Michaels. They are so cute. But I got all of the floss. Oh, that's just horrendous. See, I was in a rush and I couldn't get anything ready. But these are going to be the, this is the floss for not only these three, but they actually continue into the other ones also. So these are my flosses. You can't see the, I'm going to turn it this way because there's a pretty cranberry color there. These are the flosses for the first three, and then some of them carry over into the other six. There are nine berries total. So this one is part two, and it's day four, five, and six. Oh no, there should be tw there's 12. I said there's nine. There are 12. So that floss goes for the other nine. It's the 12 days of Christmas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, I need to be back in school. All right. So these are the flosses that are new to these three. Just those four. Plus the ones from before. I'll use some of them. So then day seven, eight, nine. Aren't those cute? It didn't have any new floss. All the floss is from the previous two patterns. And then 10, 11, and 12 just had two new flosses. Look at the drummers drumming. Aren't those cute? Oh, so, and um, I have the 35 count cocoa, which is what it's called for. I bought this probably a year ago from Gin Stitching Niche, pretty sure. I thought I heard someone flop. I can't see outside the window. I'm too far on the floor. So, that's new purchase, just the floss. I already owned the linen and the um, charts, words. Okay, then, as I think did everybody else, I bought this book, Sewing Club. Oh, it's birds. I guess somebody is outside. Uh, Sewing Club by Blackbird Designs. It is so beautiful, and I have... Again, bought the floss. It's been in the book, so it's kind of squished. These are the flosses for this one. So I plan to start this one pretty soon. I think that one's really pretty. It's called Willing Hands. 
and it says uh, she works with willing hands in delight. Isn't that pretty? So I have the floss for that one. Then I also got the floss, these flosses. Again, they're squished because they've been in the book. For this one, I thought was really cute too. I like that one's called Gathering Swallows. We get a lot of swallows here in the spring. Is it spring where you are? It's spring where I am. It's going to be in the 90s the next two days. I had about 20 hummingbirds outside. All the martins are in building their nests in the, my martin houses we have around the house. Then these colors, which I think are just so pretty. These are for tiny treetops, rose or thyme is what it says. Oh, so pretty. So those three all came out of, and I eventually want to stitch all of them because I think this book is the most beautiful book I have ever seen them design. And now I haven't been around a long time, but I've seen a lot of their books. And um, I just love, I think I love everything in that book. So this one is not a new release, but, and I thought I bought this when I went to see um, Kitten Stitcher, Teresa Vanette, when I went to Oklahoma, but apparently I was wrong. And so when I went to look for it, because I was going to start it, I didn't have it. It's Ragamuffin number two. <laughs> right side up. Ragamuffin number two. And it's a Quaker sampler. Oh, I ought to do that one for Quaker. Quarantine Quaker cell. And there's the title. And it's by Shakespeare's Peddler. And this one, the first time I saw it, I thought, oh, it's kind of cute. It's, But then when I saw the actual piece... She had it act there at um, in Oklahoma at the Silver Needle. It was amazing. It was just amazing. And I knew I had to s stitch it. And so then I decided I was going to use the silk because I was being all sorts of fancy, I guess. And so, and it's different kinds of silk. These are the silks. Aren't they beautiful though? Those colors, so pretty. These are the Soile d'Alger, which I've bought these before. I haven't used them yet, but I have bought them for um, Nicola Hands Across the Sea sampler. She, um, a bunch of her charts that I own call for this. So I think I've done two, I've kitted up two that have the silks. So then this one is Floramel Silk Floss by Gloriana. Now, I've bought Gloriana before, but this one was Floramel Silk. So I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know. I'm just reading this. I don't know. Because then this one is Gloriana. It just says Gloriana, and it's vanilla. This one is Floramel Silk Floss Antique Black. So I'm not really sure. But boy, they're soft. <laughs> I love Gloriana. And then these are needlepoint silks. Yes, these two are needlepoint silks. I tell you, out of all of them, though, these are the softest. So that is not a habit I need to get into is buying the silks. But I do love everything Teresa. So I knew I wanted to splurge to do hers. <laughs> If Teresa tells me to stitch it with something, then that's what I'm going to stitch it with. And um, the linen I actually also have coming. So hopefully it'll get started soon. And then, okay, I found Liz Matthews on Floss Tube. And I think I talked about her last time. Because um, I'm having to change some of my designs. And I'm not a designer designer. I don't plan to become a... I'm not a... Um, I'm not an artistic person. I'm an analytical person, which explains the math. I'm assuming why I love it and the joy and the beauty I find in math. Um, I just, I enjoy the putting it into the program 
and doing that kind of stuff. And so um, I'm trying to get my daughter who is artistic and can draw. It's just beautiful drawings. I want her to draw things and I can put them in and make them into cross stitch uh, charts. Like just, you know, simple little downloads you can download off my Etsy shop. Um, I do have an Etsy shop where I sell project bags. And eventually want to branch out and sell um, charts and um, some quilting things also. But that's way in the future. Anyway, Liz Matthews, way off the topic there, way off the subject. Um, I saw this on her floss tube before market. And I, when she and her mom were showing what they were going to release at Nashville and fell in love. This is my favorite thing of hers. And I haven't really seen a whole bunch of people show this one, but... Bower birds. There is something about this one that just is beautiful. Just makes my heart happy. And I don't really usually like small projects. Everything I seem to be drawn to is larger. And I don't think this one's very large. It's just 126 by 157. So... Anyway, and I, so when I saw it, I knew I wanted to do this. So I ordered linen and floss before market even started because I knew I wanted to do this one. No idea what the called for was. Hers is more of like a bluish gray. Let's see. Dove linen from Weeks Dye Works. She did hers on 36 count and she used two uh two strands of dmc 3024 i ordered from kitten stitcher 40 count pine green because for some reason i wanted it to be on green isn't that beautiful and i may change my mind but this is what i plan to stitch it on i really i'm trying to make it oh I'm too old to be sitting on the floor trying to cross my legs oh that's kind of true right there it is, um, it's very modeled. It's hard to see it when it's, there we go. And then when I was on there, I saw, I've never stitched with, um, what is this called? Color and cotton. And I know people talk about it all the time and I've never stitched with it. I'm a new stitcher and so I don't like to change thread colors. And um, not many designers or none that I've ever seen have used color and cotton and they're called for and I'm I'm still at that point where I don't really branch out and change it um, very often only if two things look really close to the same color that they call for because of dye lots I may change it then but so anyway but this is gonna be my this is color in cotton I'm looking where's the name <coughs> Sorry, my allergies. It just says hand dyed thread natural cotton. Maybe natural cotton is the name of it. But isn't that, oh, I don't know why I love this, but I do love this a lot, a lot. Like I think about this, like when I lay down to go to sleep, I think about this project. What, is that weird? Do y'all ever do that? Like I just think about how beautiful it's going to be when I'm finished. But I'm kind of worried about that one because I do not like to stitch with white. And I'm worried about what it's going to look like. So, we'll see. We'll see. So, and the last thing that I have that's really kitted up is... Little House Needleworks Kringles. How cute is this? It looks like an old department store, like from the 50s. I think this is just wonderful in so many ways. Just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I got this from Fat Quarter Shop. And um, they had, uh, like you could buy the package or whatever. And so this is the 30 count linen. You can see they packaged it. I don't like 30 count, but I thought that's what it's called for. And I'm thinking I may do it over one on the 30 count is what I was thinking because, I don't know, to me 30 count's kind of big and chunky looking, the stitches. So 
I don't know. I'll think more about that later. But then they also sold like a thread pack for the Kringles. And so I bought those. So that's what I have kitted up. I'm trying to get it out of the way. Um, oh, well, I take that back. This is not a new release. It is a chart that I already had. It's by GGR. And it's the Lonely Virgin Sampler. And I have looked at this one for a long, long time. And love those colors. I just love them. So pretty. And I got the floss. So that's what's new, is the floss. So you can see, I did keep my promise on, you know, to myself that I was going to buy floss because I've been buying a lot of floss but do you let me show you what I did this is funny that's not all the charts I have but let me show you so I order all this floss and now I have these gentle arts these are my Belle Soie. now those I know I just bought because I want to collect all of them I love Belle Soie silks these are my classic color works. And this one are my week style works. Okay, I ordered these for charts. I have no idea what charts I ordered for which I ordered them. So I have all these all this floss, and at some point I'm gonna come across the chart that they belong in. So I have them right there. I mean I have extras, but I know I bought these specifically. I don't order floss like that. Um unless it's for a chart I don't understand but like Belle Soie, I am trying to I'm trying to collect all of them they're my favorite silks because they're variegated now if you don't want variegated then I don't know what my favorite floss uh, silk is okay so anyway moving on now <clears throat> I bought all these I know I know I know I know I shouldn't have but I did so We'll just dive right into it. Um, this is Annie B's Folk Art, and it's the Haynes Sampler. And I'm sure everybody has seen these. This is a new release, so I'm not going to worry about taking it out of the package because I'm sure you've seen it. But isn't it beautiful? I love the little people. I love that house. It's just so pretty. So very, very pretty. Uh, Blackbird Designs. I got the Merry Christmas. I love that this one doesn't look specifically Christmassy, like if you didn't read Merry Christmas on it, you wouldn't even know it's a Christmas chart, to me, anyway. Um, then from Blackbirds, All Joys for Thine, and I just want to go on record as to say there are a lot more that I wanted to buy and I talked myself out of, so that's where I'm, I'm getting my, you know, my justification, I guess. All Joys for Thine. I love these. I don't know what they are. Let's see if I can make it focus. There we go. These little bugs, are they supposed to be moths? I don't know. When you see the, I'll show you the antique one in just a second. This is the antique on the back. See? The cute little bugs right there. To me, they look like bugs. I don't know if they're bugs. <laughs> we Live in Hope, and this is Blackbird Designs. Again, all of these are new releases. Um, some of the ones I bought are not, but so you probably have seen this one. And this one actually has two in it. It has another one called Home from Sea. I thought of Pam at Just Keep Stitching when I saw this. I thought she would like that. <sighs> Brenda Gervais. Wow. Can we just say wow? Okay. Uh, Souvenirs of the Heart. This one is a Star Spangled Spectacular. I love the house with the quilt block on it. I do believe that's an Ohio star, but I may not be correct, so don't quote me. I do love this. I love that they're over one. I have a thing for over one. This one is Salt Box Quilt Sampler. This one was a Nashville release, so I'm sure you've seen it. 
other places. So I like that. Uh, Manor at Quaker Hill. This one. No, it's not. It just looks like it. This is her new one. This is a new one also. Manor at Quaker Hill. I love the blue here, and I love the blue down here. It just draws my eyes. Something about that blue. Reminds me of the color of my daddy's eyes. He had ice blue eyes like that. They were just beautiful. Um, I collect. Love this one, because I do collect tomato pin cushions. So, here we go. I'm going to make it for my mom. I'm going to make one for my mom. So, this one, um, I don't know if this one is a new release. I don't know. And Shadrach, I guess is what it's called. And it's Card Cardan, is it Cardan? Cardan Antiques and Needlework. I love these little eagles right here. And I love this border. That geometric border, I think, is just amazing. It says, give to the Father praise, give glory to the Son, and to the Spirit of His grace. Yeah, Spirit of His grace. Beautiful. This one, as soon as Vanna said that she was going to do something, make them all, and put them into like a, we used to call them Jacob's Ladder, where they're all connected, like, with a ribbon or something. I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to buy it. And as soon as Vonna does a tutorial, <laughs> I'll get right on that. I just think these are beautiful. Either that or I'll put them on banding. I have some banding. Then from... Uh, and I know Pam says this correctly. Kore Batakore from Texas, y'all. We don't say that. Um, un ano in fior, a year in flowers. I'm guessing that's what it is. Un ano in fior. Do you know I uh, took French in high school? And um, French with a accent like mine, it does not come out well. Anyway, took two years of French. So, um, being at home more now, I got on Duolingo. I guess, Teresa, this is my what I'm all into section. <laughs> um, I'm all into Duolingo. Um, it's really interesting, and it's a lot of fun. And it's just, I just do about 10 minutes a day, and I'm not good with languages at all, at all, at all, at all. Um, English, grammar, I'm really good because it's about all about rules, and um, I can do that. I can do the grammar, but as other languages, I just have never, never done well in language like that. So um, anyway, Duolingo, I've been doing French and it's very interesting. So now if I actually spoke to someone from France, they probably would laugh at me and not know what I was saying, but that's okay. It's fun anyway. So I'm guessing this is a year in flowers. I'm guessing, I think she must be from Italy, right? I'm looking. Yes. Yes. Looks like it. Aren't these pretty? And I don't know if this is a new release. I just saw it and thought, I don't think it is because I think I bought it before market. I love them. I love them so much. I don't know what to do with them, but I do really like them. My uh, father-in-law was a professor of botany and I actually took botany from him and uh, he was an amazing professor and it, they just made me think of him. So, okay, this one is, I don't think it's a new release, but it was at market, like it's a re-release maybe, she said. Um, uh, Shakespeare's Peddler had these, and it's Peace and Prosperity, uh, Hands to Heart Revisited, it says. I think this one is a re-release. I love this. A lot. And I don't know what it is about it. That little girl's dress. Those flowers. I mean, I don't I don't know. The little puppy. The house, of course. I do love houses. I guess that's a universal thing. Everybody seems to. Well, I think either you love them or you hate them. Kind of a thing. Sorry, I'm trying to watch my time. Um, Heartstring Samplery. Baby, it's cold outside. 
And this one's not new either. And I know there was a um, sale going on. And um, so I didn't want to buy it or because I didn't know her. And so I felt kind of disrespectful. So I bought it. I'm just going to hold on to it. And I feel like I can stitch it sometime later on down the road. But just what a great community we have is all I can say. And I'm just so happy to be part of this community. So happy, so happy. Quaker Alphabet by Lottie Dom. Again, I don't think this one's new either, but it's just one that I had wanted. So I love that. And this one is nothing like I would normally ever want to stitch. This is by Lindy Stitches, Mary Mary Needleworker. But for some reason, I want to stitch this so badly. I mean, it doesn't look like anything I would normally stitch. I just think it's great. I mean, how clever she is. So clever. Um, I know that this is not new, but I've collected. I have the two red houses, and I also, this is the two blue houses, and then I also got the two yellow houses from Jen Stitchy Niche. I have the two red houses and the two white houses. So I thought I was thinking about putting them like Jen said something about making them into a drum. And I thought, well, maybe if I put, and then I thought maybe I would make them like stacked and make a long, like a band sampler with them. I don't know, but I just knew at some point, I just like to think about, I guess what I'm going to do more than do it. I don't know. Um, okay. Can we just talk about how cute everything that Misty Purcell had at market was? It was, it was amazing. It was just amazing. And so this is one of the things that I have bought from her. Um, her finishing on this is just so cute. This one's called Farm Fresh Eggs. And these are like little individual ornaments so you could hang on your tree she had them hanging in her window and it was just really really cute here's her so i have actually in my haul i have linen that i bought from her so i'm excited um for her to release she keeps showing linen that she's working on and so her next release i hope i can get some um i want to get some um like i'm doing my big cardinal piece it's not big the long cardinal piece that i'm doing I would like to get like half a yard of that or so to do ornaments because I'd like them all to be on the same. So I'm hoping she has some, but this one, it's nice. It's in a book and it comes, it has the um, templates and everything. So I got this one and I'm going to do, because I don't do um, mania because I do teach school and May is always a crazy time and this year, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe I will be able to do it, but I last year I did Jubilant June because it was my first May in which I was actually stitching. And so I decided to do Jubilant June because we're out of school in June where I started a new thing. So it's like my mania, but it's just in June. Um, but what I have decided to do this year in May, my plan right now is to have a Misty May Mondays. And because I'm gonna start a new Misty Purcell piece every Monday and if I can finish it before the next Monday because I have some smaller pieces already kitted up all, everything that I bought that's hers is kitted up and or started except for these that I just bought um anyway it's my dog okay I thought oh gosh um anyway so Misty May Mondays so I'm going to start a new Misty Purcell chart every Monday and so this is going to be one of the ones that I start. So I just have to get this one kitted up. I have not kitted this one up. And then I also got this one. Oh, that doesn't go there. Excuse me. I also got this one as an instant download. Savor every stitch. Because I do love to quilt and sew. And so I thought that one was perfect. So that one also will get kitted up and then I'll have all of hers kitted. 
Um, I got this one. It's a multiplication table. It's a Moira Blackburn traditional sampler chart. It says Moira Blackburn. Isn't that pretty? I just love the border. I already have a multiplication chart started. It was one of the first things I started and I really, I'm not sure if I like it or not. So it's just been sitting since then. So, but I do, I love the border in this one because it looks like an antique sampler to me. And I think that's what draws me to this one. So I went ahead and got that one. This is also a Moira Blackburn and it's called Scottish Love Sampler. And I'm pretty sure I got these from Teresa. I had these all sorted, try not to get the glare. I had these all sorted um, by the store from which I ordered, because I ordered from a bunch of different stores, because try to spread the love around. And um, But then it was so long in between my videos, which I'm going to try not to be so long that they all started getting jumbled together and I thought, if we just put them all together, it's fine. So then Plum Street Sampler, I got Winter Salt Box, which is not new, but it completes my salt box collection. And I have an idea how I wanna do those, but then I got Chocolate Hearts by Plum Street. And I think this one may be a new one. Nope, it's not, 2015. It's just that I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I love this because my husband loves deer. All he does is watch deer. He used to be a hunt when he was younger, but um, now that he's older, he's like, mm, no, not so much anymore. But uh, so this just made me think of us for some reason. I don't know why. And then I love that flower right there. So that one's cute. I got, now this one is new, Sweetheart Hill. Oh, this one, I just love. I've said that a bunch. I really like this one. The house is wonderful. The hill is wonderful. The people are amazing. So this one I would like to kit up. Same with this one. Shepherd's Song by Plum Street. Still, I have them all together. These sheep. Okay, these sheep. As a math teacher, I could do so many lessons on these sheep. If I could get it out of the bag, I could. Okay. Let me zoom. Let me focus here. Look. Look at the pattern on this one. The swirlies. Chevron. The little tiny pokies. The large polka dots. The vertical stripes. I mean, they're all different. And then that dog. How cute is he? And that butterfly. I mean, the whole thing. Love this one, too. Focus. Love this one. Okay, I really like this one. I am drawn to this one. Okay, then another new release that for somehow I had missed because it's a series. You know, designers are smart. Marketing kind of a thing too. Uh, anything that's in a series, I am. I love. I love anything in a series. So there's a new one. Or. Uh, that she had out. I don't think I got the new one because they were out, but it's Plum Street Samplers, the Noah's Christmas arc. And so I went ahead and bought part two because I think she released part seven. So here's part two and it's doves and honeybees. It's not really focusing that well. That's a little better. Doves and honeybees. This one is pandas and parrots. This one is number four. Pandas and parrots. That one's cute. This one is whales and squirrels, part three. So I bought those to start my collection. Oh, I got things out of order. Oh, you go over there. Then from Rosewood Manor, I do, and her charts are so pretty. Rosewood Manor. This one is Hunter Gatherer. And again, made me think of my husband. And I think he'll like this deer better. He doesn't really like the deer in samplers because he said they look funny. Well, he doesn't care for cross stitch at all. But I mean, in the fact that he 
is indifferent to it. I shouldn't say he doesn't like it, but he does not like the deer in the samplers. And I think he'll like this one because it looks more realistic, maybe. So that's why I bought that one. This is the Scarlet Letter. I'm not sure if that one's new. Yeah, 2020. This is the Scarlet Letter. And it's Elizabeth Simon. I want to take it out of there. Oh, it's like sealed, sealed, like not a pull apart seal, like a melted seal. So I guess when you open that, it's really open. Okay. So here we go. This is Elizabeth Simon. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think that one's going to be super pretty too. I really like that one. 1758. The Scarlet House, Charlotte Frost. Oops. So pretty. So pretty. Um, this one was on clearance at uh, Gin Stitchy Niche, and so Jolly Joy Jingle, and she's been working on this one, and it is so cute. Again, not something I would usually work on, but, I mean, it's from Raise the Roof Designs, and Teresa Vanette is the one that designed it, so of course I had to have it. Um, and then one more chart, Stacy Nash Primitives. This one is the Hydrangea Pin Keep. I'm, oh, so pretty. Red Hydrangea Pin Disc is what it's called. We don't really have hydrangeas down here. I don't know if they can grow because we're so, so, so hot. Um, I have one in a pot right now inside my house trying to grow, but... We'll see how that goes. Sorry, my allergies are just, I know you're not supposed to touch your face, but I did wash my hands before I came on. My eyes are itchy. I sneeze all the time and I'm not sick. It's okay. I do. I have this every spring. So, okay. So other than charts, I also got, I wanted to start building my finishing stash because maybe one day I might finish something. Um, I got some Lady Dot Creates and it's yams. And there's her information down here at the bottom. And this is the color. Oh, it has fuzzies on it. That's not, that's just fluff. It's so pretty. It is so very beautiful. I got that. I got a 46 count straw just because I'm using straw on my anniversaries of the heart. Did I say that I had that one? But... I think it's in my daughter's car. I think I already said that. But I'm working on straw on that one. It's 40 count. This is 46 count straw. Mm, it's a little yellower than that. I really have got to go back to my old spot next time. Maybe if I hold up something to block the... Oh, that's better. It's kind of a golden color. So, 46 count straw. I'm going to put it back in the bag or I won't know what it is there's a note inside what it is all right I also bought a little hoop and an oval hoop at Gin Stitchy Niche I know that's where I got this one to do finishing I'm hoping to have something to finish on those um, I got some tags for my bags that I sell at my Etsy shop my um, inventory is down right now because everybody bought everything, which I really appreciate right now, especially because nobody's working and I can take whatever support and I'll just put it right here. Let me try to see if I can get it to focus on it. There we go. Isn't that cute? It's just a little tiny tag I'm going to put on my, my project bags from now on. So, calculated stitcher. I bought some of those. I got some little stars. Remember the piece I showed you if you've watched previous videos? Um, it's a Misty Purcell Luminous Fiber Arts 
piece where I went and had my hair dyed. I dyed it dark. It's washing out. You can tell now. And um, I had put my glasses on and was working on my cross stitch when I was under the dryer. And then when she, when I was finished in the dryer, she said, okay, go and hover. And I took my glasses out and stuck them inside my cross stitch bag. And it had dye on the ear part and it got on my piece. So I've been looking for um, buttons or something to add. Someone said, suggested that and I thought that was a great idea. So I, I'm looking for something that's not white. Maybe if I do this, you can see it. They're just little white stars. Anyway, so I'm going to see if that will work. So I bought those just to see. I got some chenille from Dames of the Needle, and it's Sweeney Red. And then I also got some that is North Pole, because I wanted to compare the two colors. So they're a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be. I guess I did not read well enough, so I don't know how. I'm going to attach those, but we'll see. I also got Miguel's Navy. Isn't that pretty? From Dane's the Needle also. I also got Pink Mini Hearts. And these are from Kelm Scott Designs. They're all, they look almost like pink mother of pearl. That's what they remind me of. Well, it says half inch pink hearts, mother of pearl buttons with shiny front and natural back. They're so pretty. Um, I thought I had one more that was white. But I don't see it right this second. But I'm telling you, I've got like piles all around me. Alright, so then I also, from Misty Purcell's shop, I ordered her chart. And I also ordered this. I got some Lady Dot Creates Union ribbon. And that's for the design that I showed you earlier. So I have that. Then I ordered some of her 46 count Whisper. It's a gray color and it's a fat quarter, a fat quarter of Whisper. I got a 40 count soft porcelain. Oh, I wanted to, oh, she sent me two fat eights. That's what it is. Instead of a fat quarter, it's two fat eights. Mm. It's kind of a um, peachy color. It's a little washed out there. So those came from Misty Purcell. So now I can put them away that I showed you. So I also ordered then. I had another project. I ordered again from Misty Purcell. And got the Union ribbon again for a different project. Because I thought it would match. Then I got from Misty some picture this plus 40 count linen and the color is dapple it's a really pretty gray color it's a fat eighth this one is a fat quarter of weeks dye works 36 count mocha oh it's really pretty I'm not sure if 36 count is going to be the stitches will be big I don't think 36 count should be too big so I'm kind of weird about that then I also ordered 40 count this is not from misty this is from somebody else 40 count midnight linen and the reason i bought this okay um names Teresa kogut she paints i know everybody probably knows this already she paints these beautiful angels and then she transfers them into punch needle and into cross stitch and i'm on the brink of trying punch needle between Teresa Kogut and Liz Matthews and her mother. See names, or I'm really bad with names. Hold on. I know you're yelling at me right now. I'm thinking. She's so fantastically artistic. What is her name? She makes the beautiful jewelry. Oh, I can't think of Liz Matthews' mother's name. She's only, you know, she's been doing this for... 30 years or something she said I don't know okay I can't remember I'm so sorry uh, I'll put it here because by the time I'll, I'll remember then so Jennifer put it right here okay anyway Teresa Kogut I got way off on that <laughs> Teresa Kogut has a new angel out and she's on this blue color linen 
and I did not buy the angel yet. Um, but I went ahead and bought a piece of this blue and I hope it's big enough. Um, again, not anything I normally would stitch, but something about this angel speaks to me. And I don't know if it's the blue because I do love blue. I love blue and I love red. Um, but this blue is so beautiful. So I hope I can use it. And if not, I'll use it on something else. So that's why I had gotten that one. Uh, the only other thing that I have gotten is from the dollar store. And this is just a piece of paper that the, I'm not going to leave that. But I thought it would be cute for finishing. They had one with a chicken and one with a pig. And they were only $2.50. I think I can hear someone talking. I'm not sure. Okay. Anyway, that's all my haul. Hallelujah, right? Um, so I showed you my whips. i got to straighten my leg out. Hold on. I had gotten a couple of thank you notes. And I can't remember, because it's been so long, if I mentioned these. So I wanted to mention them now. Because I love to get mail. I love to get notes and cards. And it's just the sweetest thing. And I really do appreciate it. Um, this is from Yvonne. And she was one of my winners. And she sent this. And I think it is the perfect card ever. Look at that. It's a nine patch quilt. And there's nothing better than a nine patch. So pretty. So thank you, Yvonne. I really do appreciate it. And you're a very nice note. I do appreciate that so much. Sometimes I sit, I have a rocking chair in my sewing room and um, it's my great, great grandmother's. It's like from the early 1800s. And I sit in there and I read my cards. It makes me feel very happy. So she also sent this chart, it's a Cricut collection. Look how cute this is. I love this. I love this little cup right here. It's so pretty. I love it done down here with the buttons too. I just had to figure out where, what colors I would go with. I'm not a purple person, so I think I would redo the purple. So if it goes in my kitchen, I would do blue. If I put it in here, I would do a red. It is just so beautiful. I love the little crickets on it. It's just really cute. She also sent me another one, but it's just a chart, so I don't want to show that one. So, Yvonne, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, then I had a giveaway. Oh, wait, no. Um, I had another one from the Curie Stitcher. Laura, she sent me a thank you. Isn't that cute? Look at that little bird. Oh, it is so sweet. She, if you don't watch her, she's the Curahy Stitcher, and she is so sweet and soft-spoken, and she just lights up my day when I watch her videos, so I love, if you haven't watched her yet, you need to go watch her. She and uh, Dina, Half Stitch, Cross Stitch, I love to listen to both of them speak, because I am loud and... Um, well, I'm just loud. We are all, my whole family, we're loud when we all get together. Um, so I would love to be very soft-spoken and, but genteel, if you will, but I'm just not, but I would like to be. So, so Laura and Dina, I strive to be like you one day, please. I had a giveaway and my giveaway was for Heart of the Home Sampler. This one right here. There it is. Isn't that cute? And my winner is, okay, now here's the thing. On my computer, I don't know how to see the whole name. And so I know her name, and I'm going to comment on her comment, is Deborah Pena, and then it's hyphenated, and if it's F-R-A-N-S. And then it has like dot, dot, dot. So I don't know what the last, <laughs> the rest of your last name is. But um, I am going to comment on your comment. But it's Deborah Pena and then hyphen F R A N S something. So if that's you, then just send me an email at my email address right here. Uh, let me know your mailing address so I can get this sh shipped off to you. So that's exciting. Oh, you know what? I didn't, I need to do that. I need to pull for a, um, I've, a lot, I've heard a lot of people talking about how, um, let me get, um, they don't, 
like to have a lot of whips. I don't, the number of whips doesn't bother me. Um, to me, whether I've started it or I just have it kitted, I can see my puppy. Oh, he's stretching. Uh, it's the same thing to me. Um, it, it doesn't matter. So that doesn't bother me. Um, I would rather have a small start in everything than um, just have it sitting there and not doing it. I don't know why. I don't, that's just the way I think. Anyway, well, so, like I said, I started stitching a year ago in December. And, of course, when you first start, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what was out there. I just saw Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop, and she um, was showing cross stitch, and I said, you know, that looks like fun. I think I would like that. So, I went ahead and bought a Lori Holt pattern, I think it was probably, and some, I want to say it was like 10 count or 12 count, because that's what they, she focuses on like Ada and um, the lower counts of linen, which is great. That's fine. But I kept thinking, I really don't like it. The X's are huge and I don't like the way I can't, I can't get my flaws to lay correctly on Ada. I don't, I don't know how you Ada stitchers can do it. I have the hardest time with more than one strand of floss also. And so maybe one day I'll get better at that. So we'll see. But so I started there and then I thought, well, I want to stitch things that have smaller X's. So then I started looking and I found a place in England. And so I sent off and got a kit from England. And then I was looking at it and I didn't really like the color. And I'm like, well, surely I can find some floss and at this time fat quarter shop wasn't selling the floss yet they were just delving into cross stitch and I just happened upon a one two three stitch and I was like oh my gosh I can get all sorts of colors and then um uh Kimberly at fat quarter shop talked about uh Priscilla and Chelsea at some point and floss tube she kept talking about floss tube and I was like I don't what is floss tube I don't know what that is and so I googled it and so then it was a slippery slope and I just you know slid on down and have joined the crazy and um it's a happy crazy but it's a crazy and so I started buying charts well I have I have a lot of charts. I am a compulsive person by nature. And so, um, to collect things and to get them all and put them all in order. And it just, it, it makes me happy. And so I find as much happiness in that as I do in the actual stitching. Um, the last few nights I've been getting home from the, um, grocery store. I've been so tired that all I'm doing is reorganizing my DMC um, I want it off the bobbins. I don't like the creases that it's making in my floss when it's been bobbinated. And um, so I'm reorganizing the way Vonna Pfeiffer showed in one of her YouTube videos. And so um, anyway, so I went through my stash. Got to try got all the way back. See, I had to hold the box so I could remember. Um, went through my stash. And because right now... There is no way that I'm going to be able to stitch everything I own. And that's fine. That does not bother me. Um, I enjoy the getting it, kitting it up. You know, how much mat, how much uh, floss do you need? How much linen am I going to need? And I like, you know, squaring up my linen and doing the zigzag edges around that. I would like to do all that kind of stuff. I like the prepping of it. And so... But there's a lot of charts in here that I will never get to. Either my taste of change or it's just not in a high priority. I know I will never get to it because I am not a spring chicken. My baby just turned 17. That should tell you something. So I have all of these that I have picked out to give away. So now I'm not going to give them all away right now. But... Um, so now I have a good stash of things to give away. Now, one of the things I'm going to give away is actually the Hands-On Design Snowy Chalk Full. And the only reason I'm giving it away is because it was on top of my stack. <laughs> uh, 
I belong to the Fat Quarter Shop Club where I get these whenever they're released. And where I live, I've said this before, we don't have winter. And um, if we do, it's like, you know, a day or two a year and that's it. So I have the Santa Claus one and, but I don't, once Christmas is over, I take it down and I get Valentine's stuff out. So I keep my Christmas stuff up probably a week or two after Christmas because I don't want to let it go. <laughs> and then I change and do Valentine's. So I never decorate for Christmas because it's already starting to get to be like 60 and stuff at that point. And I'm like, I don't feel like decorating in snow because it just doesn't feel right when it's so warm outside. So anyway, needless to say, I have the Santa Claus one, but I don't need this one because I don't decorate for this. So I thought this would be a great one to give away. I have that and I also have the chalkboard black 14 count Ada that came with it. And so I'm going to give this whole thing away. So if you're interested in winning this, let me put it back in the bag so I don't, it doesn't get lost. Okay. If you're interested in the chart and in the Ada, then just mention snowy, something about snowy in your comments. And I know you're interested in winning that. So that's going to be our next giveaway. Uh, I am going to try to have another video that's not so crazy, although I guess all of mine feel unorganized and crazy. I have a very regimented life, I guess I should say. I regiment everything. Everything is scheduled. Everything is down to the, you know, lists and details and all the things. And so my stitching is the only place in my life where I'm just like, woohoo, I get to be free. And so um, I think just my videos usually come across like that too. <laughs> anyway. Whatever. I don't even know. Let me put that back over there. Okay. So if you're interested in the giveaway, mention Snowy. Um, see, I didn't make a list. I usually have a list of things. Don't forget to talk about this. And so I know I've forgotten to talk about something. Um, if I did, I'll mention it next time. So I think what I was saying was I'm hoping to get another video out soon. Um, within a week, I'm hoping. Hopefully, hopefully by this weekend. Um, oh, and Deborah, don't forget, email me and I will get this mailed out as soon as I hear from you. Since I don't have to go to school other than to go deliver homework and pick it up. And uh, speaking of, I got to go grade papers right now so I can get grades in the grade book and the kids can see what they, how they did. I'm looking around to make sure there was nothing else I wanted to mention. Oh, there was, but I'll do that next time. I do want to show you very quickly, um, the academic stitcher was showing her applique, um, something, I don't know, her and one of the stitching with the sisterlies, I don't know if, uh, Colleen, if they have something going on about that, but I have been applicating. I don't do it the same as she does it. I do mine is hand, like I turn it, and then it's, here's the back where I've stitched it on. And then this is the front. So you can see my needle right there. So this has all been stitched. But I do mine hand stitching. Oh, let me get up closer. Um, I enjoy any kind of hand work. So all of this has been stitched on by hand. And it's turned under. So I have tried applique. Now this part is not. You can see right there where it hasn't. I need to tuck it back under because it's coming off. But like all of this, I just have it tacked down. See, I have it turned under. And then I just go over it and stitch it. Um, this is for a quilt called Sarah Revisited. No, Revival. Sarah Revival. I don't think I have the pattern. I should have gotten that. Poor planning. Anyway, so this is my hand applique that I'm working on. Um, I have some other quilting projects that I really need to get to work on. So maybe I'll do that today after I clean up my mess. Ooh, I got a mess all around me. So um, I didn't want to talk about that. So the academic stitcher was talking about hers. And I thought, oh, I'm doing one too. Hers is beautiful. And she did hers on the 
she did her applique like around the edges. I thought somebody walked in. It's okay. Um, she did it with her sewing machine, and I think that is amazing. And I've seen people, I've seen people do that. I can't do that. I can't, I can't stay right on the edge. I have a hard time, so I just do it by hand. Um, it's a lot of fun. I thought about doing for quarantine very long. I thought about doing classes on something not maybe this. I know most people don't want to do something this technical. Mine, the prep is what takes the longest. The actual stitching doesn't take me very long. It's the um, the prepping of the fabric to get it ready to be stitched down. I can't just do, so one process is called needle turn, where you turn it as you go. And I can't make mine super smooth. So I use a uh, Templar, Templar, I think it's called, that's what it's called, Templar. Um, it's like, um, plasticky sheets. They're like sheets of paper and then you cut out your design and then you, uh, use starch and you like, and then iron it up and it preps, gets it all folded. So it's nice and straight and that's how I do it. And I thought maybe that I could come up with a pattern or something and people could you know, follow along if they wanted to learn how to do it. I don't know. I don't know if anybody would be interested. Um, I have learned that things like this either relax you or stress you out. <laughs> My students, we always do a sewing project at the end. And I think that's what most of them are missing is that they're not getting to. My Algebra 2 class, um, they, we make blocks. In fact, I'm, I'm putting the last years together because I usually... I'm behind and I usually have it together to take up there so they can see it. Um, hopefully I'll show it to you this weekend. Maybe I'll have it put together and, um, and then we put it together and it makes a quilt and then I, um, unveil it usually at the beginning of next year then. So the students from last year will come up and look at it and I put it all together in one quilt and they get to see theirs and it hangs in the hallway at school. So anyway um and i've learned from them that some of them love it and keep doing it forever and then some of them it stresses them out my son last year i had him in algebra 2 and uh he hated it he hated it he broke i always take i take some of my uh sewing machines oh you know what i didn't do that you know what i will add a video at the end introducing you to another sewing machine. I think I'm going to do one of my treadles. It's my oldest sewing machine I have. Um, anyway, I'm talking really quickly. I'm sorry I do that. Slow down. My son broke two of my antique sewing machines. I take like six of them up there for my students to stitch on at a time. Uh, not broke them. Well, like I couldn't repair them, but yeah, he broke them. <laughs> I had to fix them. So yeah, he does not like to sew at all. Um, anyway, train of thought. So video at the end of Liza Nelly. That's the one I'm going to show you, I think. And, um, other than that, I'll see you this weekend, hopefully. And I hope you all are staying safe and well. And I miss y'all. And I love all the videos that are coming up, all the floss tubers. I appreciate the videos. Um, I, the longer, the better, because you're keeping me company. I hope this wasn't too disjointed and crazy and I'll try, I really, I'll make notes and try to be better next time. Um, until then, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay. This is Liza Nelly before, look, there are some projects. This is a sewing machine. This is Liza Nelly. She's a treadle. She actually works. She has a coffin top. And so I was going to show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like in my bedroom um, before I take the top off. So I was just going to show it to you. So that's what she looks like. Okay, this is Liza Nelly. I'm sitting at her. I'm going to move this. Hold on. Um, isn't she just, she's just gorgeous. It's hard to see because these are my windows. Look, that's my son, the one that just turned 17. Look, he's a baby. So you can see outside. Hello outside. I don't see any birds out there right now. Um, anyway, back to where we were going. Liza Nelly, she's a singer. She has the most beautiful decals. 
Can you see the blue right here? It's so pretty. Which I'm guessing she probably wasn't used much is why. I don't know. But you can tell like right here. See where she's worn. But she's old. She's from 1870. 1879. I think 1879. I was going to show you how she works. If I can do this with one hand. Um, so she's a treadle. Here's my foot. And then I just spin her little wheel. And she just sews. She sews beautifully. I mean, she just, look at this stitch. I hope you're not getting sick. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yep. Over a hundred years old. Sews as beautiful as ever. Thank you, Tube. See you later.